in the enigmatic expanse of the cosmos beyond the farthest reaches of sunlight's whisper, a solitary traveller floats silently, a celestial vagabond of sorts. This is not a spaceship crewed by astronauts, nor a probe programmed to return to its creators. It is Voyager 2, an aged yet tenacious messenger, launched by humanity nearly five decades ago. Most believe that after crossing the boundary of our solar system, it became a silent observer, whispering back the secrets of the cosmic void. But now, something has shifted. Voyager 2 has detected something, something that should not move, something that should not be there. For years, Voyager 2's journey through the interstellar medium had been unremarkable filled with particles, magnetic fields, and cosmic silence. Until the silence was broken, until emotion, deliberate and unmistakable, echoed in the darkness. Something was moving, with purpose. When scientists on Earth decoded the strange anomalies Voyager 2 transmitted, a chilling realization began to take hold. What we feared, deep down, might actually be true. Voyager 2 had long passed the planets, past Neptune, past Pluto, past the heliopause, the invisible line where our sun's influence fades and interstellar space begins. Out there it was expected to drift quietly, picking up minor fluctuations in space dust and solar radiation. But instead, it picked up movement, the kind of movement that doesn't happen by chance. At first, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory noticed what they thought was a blip in the plasma wave data, a spike that lasted only seconds. These instruments are incredibly sensitive and usually report on changes in particle densities or interactions with magnetic fields. But this time, the signal carried a strange signature. It pulsed in a rhythm. It wasn't just data, it felt like a pattern, not natural, not random. Engineers thought perhaps it was interference, maybe a glitch due to cosmic rays or even system degradation. After all, Voyager 2 is nearly 50 years old. But when the same signal repeated and with increased strength, they knew something was wrong, or perhaps very right. Because the data wasn't noise, it was a broadcast. Voyager 2 had seen something and it had recorded it. When the data was cleaned up and analysed, something emerged that sent a ripple through the scientific community. There was an object, approximately 500,000 kilometres from the probe, moving out of velocity inconsistent with any known natural body in that region. No asteroid belts, no rogue planets, no expected comets. And yet, this thing, Whatever it was was not just drifting, it was tracking. The direction of movement was toward the same vector that Voyager 2 was travelling. The object's speed adjusted slightly in a way that mimicked Voyager's trajectory. Imagine a predator stalking silently in the wake of its prey, adjusting its movements just enough to stay in range, but not enough to provoke suspicion. NASA scientists weren't alone in their panic. Independent astronomers and military observers, especially those involved in deep space tracking, were pulled in. They confirmed it. It wasn't a malfunction. The plasma density readings, the magnetometer anomalies, even slight fluctuations in the probe's gyroscopic data, all pointed to a single conclusion. Voyager 2 had company and that company might not be benign. Perhaps the most terrifying revelation came not from what Voyager 2 saw, but from what it sent back. A radio frequency burst, piggybacked onto the regular telemetry feed, contained a digital signal that had no origin in Voyager's own systems. It wasn't programmed to send this, but it did. When decrypted, the packet of data contained a series of binary strings that when plotted visually, formed patterns, almost like glyphs, not natural cosmic waves, not background noise. These were constructed deliberately, 
some liken them to crop circle geometry, others to symbols seen in early human history, spirals, intersections, recursive loops. A group of AI linguists and astrophysicists ran the data through contextual analysis algorithms. The results were horrifying. The structure of the signal matched what we would expect from an intentional transmission, not from Voyager, but from something else. Something that had either hijacked or embedded itself in the signal stream. Whether it was a warning or a message, no one could say for sure. But the implications were clear. Voyager 2 wasn't alone in deep space, and what it encountered might have noticed us back. The scientific community is divided. Some argue this is the evidence we've been waiting for, proof that we're not alone. Others are less optimistic, worried that this is a signal of surveillance or worse, a prelude. In past decades, the thought of extraterrestrial life was mostly relegated to exoplanet discoveries and faint signals from distant stars. But this, this was close and it wasn't passive. What makes this discovery even more chilling is the timing. Similar anomalies were observed in data from Voyager 1 just months before, but were dismissed as static interference. Now those readings are being reviewed under a new light, and many believe we've been too blind, too arrogant to consider the most terrifying explanation. That someone, or something, has been watching us longer than we dared to admit. And now, they've made contact. As Voyager 2's instruments continued to capture data, a team at the Deep Space Network received an unfiltered stream of electromagnetic readings, frequencies oscillating in patterns they had never encountered before. At first, analysts thought it could be interference, cosmic rays, a background fluctuation, but when the team isolated the signal and enhanced its waveforms, what emerged stunned them. A structured sequence, pulsing with mathematical precision, almost as if it were artificial. Scientists ran a Fourier analysis. What they saw mirrored the base harmonic frequencies of hydrogen, but inverted. A deliberate alteration of the universe's most abundant element. What could that possibly mean? The signal wasn't just noise, it was trying to speak. The team cross-referenced the signal's path with Voyager 2's trajectory, only to discover that this movement had shifted. It wasn't random, it was tracking the probe. Digging into the archives, an intern at NASA stumbled upon decades-old telemetry from Voyager 1. When comparing the data, a disturbing alignment emerged. In the exact same region of interstellar space, decades apart, Voyager 1 had experienced a brief data anomaly nearly identical to Voyager 2's recent findings. But back then, the disruption had been dismissed as static. Now, in hindsight, it looked like a first encounter. Scientists revisited the Voyager 1 logs and applied modern AI-powered decoding tools to the signal distortions. The result? The waveform matched the current event almost perfectly. This was no coincidence. Something or someone was out there, not billions of light years away, but lurking in the shadows of our own solar system, watching, waiting, and perhaps the most terrifying part. They chose now to respond, not when Voyager launched, not when it passed Neptune. But now, when our species finally reached the technological threshold needed to understand, the question isn't whether we're alone anymore. The real question is, what have we just woken up? Stay alert, because this story is far from over. The next signal could come at any moment, and the next discovery might not just change what we know about the universe. It might change who we are. In the annals of human history, there have been moments of discovery that have shaken the very foundations of our understanding. The Copernican Revolution, where we learned that we do not occupy the center of the universe. 
the discovery of DNA, the building block of life. These are moments that have forever changed our perspective, challenging our assumptions and forcing us to rethink our place in the cosmos. Mm. This, dear reader, may be such a moment. As the scientific community grapples with the implications of Voyager's findings, the public reaction is a mixture of awe, fear and disbelief. Some see this as a sign of hope, a beacon in the darkness, a proof that we are not alone in the universe. Others are more sceptical, viewing this as a potential threat, a harbinger of doom. But regardless of one's perspective, there is no denying the profound impact this discovery could have on our collective psyche. Imagine a world where we are no longer alone, where there are beings out there, watching, waiting. What would that mean for us, for our sense of self, for our understanding of our place in the universe? Would we feel a sense of kinship, a shared bond with these beings, or would we feel threatened, vulnerable, exposed? These are questions that have been asked by philosophers, theologians and scientists for centuries. But until now, they have been mere speculation. Now, however, we have evidence, tangible proof that something is out there. And while we may not have the answers to these questions, we are one step closer to understanding the universe and our place in it. But this discovery also raises new questions. Who or what is out there? What do they want? Are they friendly or hostile? Are they capable of travelling vast distances through space? Or are they merely watching, observing? These questions are difficult to answer, and it may be years, if not decades, before we have definitive answers. In the meantime, the scientific community is working tirelessly to analyse the data, to decipher the messages, and to understand what this means for us. In the meantime, we can only speculate. Some scientists suggest that the signals could be the product of natural phenomena, a cosmic coincidence. Others argue that the signals are too structured, too deliberate, to be a mere accident. They suggest that these signals are the product of an intelligent, sentient being. But regardless of one's interpretation, there is no denying the significance of this discovery. We are no longer alone in the universe. We have made contact, and whether this contact is friendly or hostile, it is a moment that will forever be etched in the annals of human history. As we stand on the precipice of this new era, there is a sense of excitement, of anticipation, but there is also a sense of trepidation, of uncertainty. As we peer into the cosmic abyss, we are confronted with the unknown, with the vast uncharted expanse of space. And while this unknown is terrifying, it is also exhilarating. It is a reminder of our humanity, of our insignificance in the grand scheme of the universe, but it is also a reminder of our potential, of our capacity for growth, for discovery. We have come a long way since the days of Galileo, since the days of Copernicus. We have harnessed the power of the atom, we have sent probes to the very edge of our solar system, and now we have made contact with something or someone out there. This is a moment of profound significance, a moment that will forever change our understanding of ourselves, of our place in the universe. It is a moment that will challenge our assumptions, our beliefs, and our understanding of the cosmos. And it is a moment that, in the end, will remind us of what it means to be human. As we continue to analyse the data, to decipher the signals, to understand what this means for us, we must remember that we are not alone. We are part of something greater, something cosmic, something unfathomable. And while this may be terrifying, it is also a source of hope, of inspiration. For in the end, we are not just a species, we are a part of the universe a part of the cosmic tapestry.
and while we may not know what lies beyond the edge of our solar system, we know that there is something out there, something waiting, watching. And that, in itself, is a powerful reminder of our potential, of our capacity for growth, for discovery. So, as we stand on the precipice of this new era, let us embrace the unknown, let us embrace the cosmic abyss, let us remember that we are not alone, and that we are part of something greater than ourselves, and let us strive to understand, to learn, and to grow, for in the end it is our capacity for discovery, our capacity for understanding, that defines us as a species, and it is this capacity that will carry us forward into the unknown, into the cosmic abyss. In this new era we must remember to stay vigilant, to stay alert, for while we may have made contact, we do not yet know what this means for us. We do not know what lies beyond the edge of our solar system, and we do not know what these beings, or whatever they may be, are capable of. But we must also remember to stay hopeful, to stay optimistic, for we have made contact, and we have the opportunity to learn, to grow, to understand. And it is this opportunity, this potential, that makes this moment so profound, so significant. So, as we continue to analyse the data, to decipher the signals, to understand what this means for us, let us remember to stay vigilant, to stay alert. But let us also remember to stay hopeful, to stay optimistic, for in the end it is our capacity for discovery, our capacity for understanding that defines us as a species, and it is this capacity that will carry us forward into the unknown, into the cosmic abyss. This is a moment of profound significance, a moment that will forever change our understanding of ourselves, of our place in the universe. It is a moment that will challenge our assumptions, our beliefs, and our understanding of the cosmos. And it is a moment that, in the end, will remind us of what it means to be human. So, as we stand on the precipice of this new era, let us embrace the unknown, let us embrace the cosmic abyss, let us remember that we are not alone, and that we are part of something greater than ourselves, and let us strive to understand, to learn, and to grow, for in the end it is our capacity for discovery our capacity for understanding that defines us as a species, and it is this capacity that will carry us forward into the unknown, into the cosmic abyss.